Hello, welcome to today's video blog. Today we're going to have a talk about mobile phones, and in particular this Motorola V50. Uh, I got this off eBay, uh, just to, to experiment with really. Uh, I wasn't sure whether it would work, it was sold as untested. Uh, but it's a, a really small phone, it has a cool holographic LCD reflector. Uh, that, that's a, quite a unique thing, you don't get those these days, and I think that's because the company that made them doesn't make them anymore. Uh, unfortunately I have had a play with the phone, it, it uh, did work, now it doesn't. So we'll have a little look at the fault, see if we can repair it, I don't think we will. Uh, and we'll also take a little look at the build quality of it, because this actually got quite rubbish build quality when you compare it to say something that's of a, a more conventional design like this Ericsson A1018S. This Ericsson has a lovely uh, build quality. Uh, I'll take that apart for you in another video, but for now we'll just have a little look at this Motorola V50. Let's go. Now as you can see already the phone is already pre-torn down. I'm not going to do a tear down live on camera because it's already taken apart. Uh, I was working on it all yesterday afternoon to see if I can get it working. Uh, so, we'll have a look at the individual parts in a bit, but uh, for now I'm just going to show you the uh, LCD. Uh, the LCD is up, up here. We'll see if we can show that holographic effect. If you look at it at a certain angle, it collects all the light and spews it out in one direction. There, there we go, to make it very bright. And that's a lot brighter than your typical LCD reflector. I've got that pointed a bit towards the uh, window where there's, it's a bit of a cloudy day but quite bright so you can see that's quite bright. As I, as I turn it away, it loses that brightness. If we compare that to um, something slightly more conventional like this, you can see, uh, I mean this is a pretty good LCD display anyway on this Ericsson, but uh, you can see it doesn't have that nice green colour that the uh, holographic one does. Right, next let's have a look at the back of the display, there's nothing much significant here except there's uh, a speaker and unusually there's a, a real-time clock battery, I, can't, I, must say I wasn't expecting to see one of those, although the phone does have a, a clock. So it makes sense for there to be a battery somewhere. Uh, the battery actually soldered onto this flex PCB here. And it's uh, located just under there. It's got some tabs welded on, then the tabs are just soldered onto the PCB. Here's the PCB where the um, LCD panel is located. Uh, they've got a few wires for the power and for the uh, backlight coming up this little ribbon cable, there's some finer traces on the back for the data. Uh, this would appear to be the controller chip for the LCD. And then there's one of those uh, little ribbon cables going underneath to the uh, actual LCD itself. Um, I won't show that because I'd have to take the uh, whole module out. Moving on to the uh, main board now, this is one side of it, uh, you can see it has a, a SIM card socket, it's a, an Anne Fennel socket, it uh, clips open like that, you slide your SIM card in, uh, flip it over and then uh, lock it shut. Uh, these are the battery terminals, uh, that's the charging and data port, and flipping it over to the other side, we have a whole dedicated PCB for the uh, uh, switches. Here's the um, actual button overlays that goes on. This one's all cracked and it's, it's made quite uh, of, a, of a quite brittle material so it's, it must be quite prone to uh, cracking. Uh, anyway, the button's on here and they simply go on with uh, a connector. There's the uh, connector on 
this PCB and there's the connector on the main PCB. And this means that they can obviously use both sides of the PCB for the uh, actual mobile phone circuitry. Now I mentioned earlier that the phone didn't work. Uh, it did work when I first got it. Uh, the battery was dead of course. Um, a lot of old phones from this period, I think this was made in about 1999. Uh, they're often dead. In fact this, this one's getting a bit crusty, I think it's a bit leaked. But you can power it from 5 volts. Now you can power it from 5 volts directly on this uh, input connector. So I, I uh, traced out the uh, pins to some solderable points on the PCB. I soldered a couple of wires on, hooked it up to my fixed 5 volt power supply, and it worked. Uh, for, for a time at least. It worked most of yesterday uh, afternoon. But somehow then I managed to kill it and it wouldn't work at all. Now today, I've had it fired up a couple of times. Uh, unfortunately it was drawing far too much current. It was drawing in the order of about 700 milliamps, which it shouldn't be doing anywhere near that. Uh, and it was getting a bit warm. And it only started up a couple of times. So let's go and have a little look at the fault and, and see whereabouts it is. Now there's supposed to be a shielding can at the uh, right hand side of this PCB. Uh, I've already pulled it off because this that uh, particular shielding can was getting very hot uh, and I wanted to see what was under it so we can investigate. And here we can see the particular chip that's causing us problems. It's a Texas Instruments one. Sorry for the um, slight blurriness. Uh, I'm holding the camera myself. Uh, the chip obviously has quite a lot of pins as you can see round, round each of the four sides. That part number means absolutely nothing to me, I don't know what this chip is. However, uh, it gets very hot. Right, I've hooked up my 5 volt power supply, let's turn it on and see what happens. You might have just seen that on the uh, red ammeter. It draws a uh, a few hundred milliamps just momentarily when it comes on, but uh, it doesn't actually do anything else. Let's just feel that chip. It's cool at the moment, but it's not drawing any current. If I fix the keypad on... There we go, and press the power button which is in the corner, let's see what happens. Uh, nothing happened except for a bit of current draw, what happens is when I press it, it draws several hundred milliamps and when we let go it draws several hundred milliamps more for a fraction of a second. Uh, but uh, no activity, now if I just sort of repeatedly press it so it draws lots, lots of quite a lot of current. Uh, eventually this uh, Texas Instruments chip here gets very hot. Uh, so that I'm guessing there's a fault with this one uh, and I, I really don't know what uh, that chip does, I can't replace it so I, I think basically this motherboard's had it. So if anyone wants some parts from a, a Motorola V50 uh, you'd be quite welcome to them. I think what I'll do is I'll um, scrap this for parts because uh, the case it was really tatty when I got it um, I might be able to find a use for this holographic LCD there it is look very nice I like that uh, one peculiar feature about this phone was though someone's obviously had a hack at it before if you look on the uh, case there's no sticker normally there would be a sticker here saying the model number where it's made uh, and the IMEI number. Uh, however, that was missing, and when you type star hash 06 hash to um, retrieve the IMEI number and display it on the screen, the type allocation code is all zeros plus a, a fact, uh, fin final assembly code of I think it was 49. Uh, so someone's obviously somehow reset the um, IMEI number in it. Uh, I honestly can't say why, I don't know how they've done it, uh, they've probably had some sort of programming cable in. 
Uh, as I said, I don't know why they'd have done that. Uh, uh, I, I don't know how to change change it back. Uh, I don't have the original one, so... Uh, someone's obviously hacked at it before, and that might explain why the case had been prized open. But just before I leave off, let's uh, have a look at the uh, build quality of the phone overall. Now, the main reason I was disappointed with the uh, build quality of this is the uh, plastics just seem quite flimsy. Um, it's probably hard to show up on the camera, but they, they, they just feel a bit flimsy, a bit, bit too thin and, and so on. Uh, if we take this uh, back cover off, uh, we'll see that there aren't actually any screws in, in here, so they've obviously uh, saved a bit of cost on production there. Uh, it's held together by these four clips. There's one there, one there, one there, and one there that was unfortunately broken. So uh, the phone won't quite hold together properly. You see, it feels a bit creaky. Uh, it's had already got some marks on from being prized open. But I had to prise it open some more. And the uh, display module here. Uh, this was actually quite difficult to get off. Um, this was quite difficult to take off. This is the cover for it, and of course, I actually had to remove it from the tele from the rest of the telephone. Uh, that also was quite a bit of a, a challenge. So I, I don't think they designed this with the intention of it being serviced, um, or at least not much of it being serviced. Uh, the antenna comes off quite easily. Uh, here's the uh, antenna. It'll probably just be a little um, coil in in there. Uh, that that just screws on and makes contact with the PCB, uh, and of course there's the uh, keypad. This keypad is um, it's quite thin. It's uh, quite brittle, and uh, you can perhaps see on on there uh, it's uh, starting to come apart. So it probably wouldn't survive a, a huge amount of use. But uh, the actual um, tactile domes on the uh, PCB actually would seem to work quite well. So. The uh, dodgy keypad isn't uh, entirely bad. Anyway, it's probably a nice little phone uh, to use. Uh, I've tried making a call on it. The audio quality was fantastic. Uh, probably even better than this uh, big Ericsson one I've got. Um, I think that might be because the um, speaker up here is located well away from the rest of all the circuitry. Uh, that's uh, inevitable with this flip design. Uh, whereas on, uh, say, a big phone like this, the speaker is up here with the antenna and all the RF circuitry. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to scrap this Motorola phone and uh, stick to using this uh, Ericsson one.